Hello everyone. What I'm gonna show you today is next important carving techniques. Crab carving techniques. We also know the crab. It is marine creature. In terms of our next page carving, it also exists in our tea cup and on our teapot. It embodies a kind of interesting taste in it. So many people like to carve it on our tea set. Let's take a look before carving the crab. Usually we see crab to large pincers and eight legs. This is its most distinctive feature. So when we sculpt, pay attention to its posture, especially to claws. Usually lift up, look more mightily. What about legs? Because if all eight legs are portrait, it will be difficult. But when we are poetry, the structure must be clearly expressed. Can be messy, and the posture of the legs. Can appear unreasonable with its posture change. Before carving, in order for everyone to see clearly, we just painted the ink on the mold. After the ink dries, we engrave. This ink brush area is the area where we will be carving. Because the entire area is relatively large, we may consider when composing the picture, not just carve one. It is possible to carve two, or carve some graphic plans beside crab, etc. Make our composition fuller, make our picture more complete. When we are carving, the order of carving is: first, let's sculpt the body of the crab. We should pay attention when we move the knife, because crab has a solid body. So when we are holding the knife, generally deeper to deeper points, to move is pay attention. This is positioning of the crab's body, because its body is flat around. We have to portray some details. This is its head. Then stretch out two eyes. We see two eyes digging out. We just covered it. The next step is to cover some small details on the body, because on the crab and more the gel, there will be some fluff or bumps. We also make relatively simple impression. Now we are ready to cover its two big pincers. The claw lines. These joints will appear on the left and right upper corners around it, and then do the pincers part. It's also the front part of the claws. We need to move with bigger and deeper fillings. Then when engraving its details, pay attention to the shoulders of the claws. Sometimes we need to curve the details clearly. Next is to curve another clause. The seam need to work harder and curve it deeper. And the front part of the clause. We shield the two pincers. Next, we need to curve its legs. Four legs on each side. The extended joints can be extended from one place. Next, engrave a second and third legs. It is possible that several legs may not necessarily be arranged in parallel. We need to pay attention to this dynamic, especially in the end. This one is like a padding, because it is a padding foot. We simply cut it a bit shorter, and then go to the other side. Cut the second after the first.
basically after engraving. Let's cut the details. Like a scrap cloth, there are some small stones and small bumps on the front princess. We also have to explain these details relatively. There may also be some thin bumps on the legs. Let's explain. Then in this case, we will finish carving a crab. In order to facilitate the composition, let's take a look. It's okay if you carve a small one next day. Just carve another one. A little deeper. Then carve his eyes and mouth. Next, we carve his crab's claws. To deep moons. The other side. Cut out two claws. Cut his legs after claws. Give out its legs. If its legs are staggered, let's describe the contest. The next step is to portray the details. The same as before, make some bumps on its body. Let me carve the small details of the position of the claws. After carving, two crabs are basically finished. Our two crabs are finished like this. Next, everyone takes out their own mud. You can follow the teacher's demonstration on your own mud. Then watch more and learn more. Do one of your own exercises.